Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at sampling and bias. Now it's quite a short video, there's only a couple of questions for us to have a look at. We're going to have a look at this one question in a couple of different ways, maybe a non-calculator and a calculator way, and there's a couple of little questions for you to have a go at, but it's certainly not going to be a long one. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at this question. Now it says, Hannah is planning a day trip for 195 students, and she has a sample of 30 where they want to go, and each student chooses a place. It says the table here shows the information about her results, so we can see that there's people that want to go to the theme park, the theatre, the sports centre and the seaside. And it says work out how many of the 195 students you think will want to go to the theme park. Okay, so we're just looking at the theme park here, which is just here. And it says state any assumption you make and explain how this may affect your answer. Okay, and we'll have a look at that a bit when we finish. First of all, let's try and work this out. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, I'm going to discuss the non-calculator method to start with, as this is quite a nice non-calculator question. Now it obviously says that she takes a sample of 30 students. If it doesn't say that, we can get that from the total down here and we get a total of 30. Now in terms of the students that want to go to the theme park out of the sample, well there are 10 students in the sample, so that is 10 out of 30 students. Okay, so that's 10 out of 30 that want to go to the theme park. And if we simplify that fraction, that simplifies down to one third, okay, dividing the top and bottom by 10 there. So what we can say is that we know a third of the students based on the sample are going to want to go to the uh, theme park. So if she's going to ask 195 students, then we just need to work out one third of the 195 students that she's planning for. So we could work that out, we could do one third of 195 and obviously if we're doing this without a calculator we're going to want to use a bit of bus stop here so 195 divided by 3 3 goes into 19 6 times up to up to 18 remainder 1 and then it goes into 15 5 times there we go so our answer here would be 60 five students okay that we were expecting to want to go to the theme park there so that's obviously a little non-calculator method it works quite nicely for this question here but they're not all going to be non-calculator questions so we could have to do this in a an, in a calculator way as well now if we've got 30 people in the sample essentially we want to figure out uh, how do we get that 30 to represent 195 students in a way so how do we get from 30 to 195 okay we've got 195 that we want to go so if we figure out uh, how we can turn this uh, and scale it up to 195 we can figure out how many 30s go into 195 so if I can do 195 I could divide it by 30 let's do this on the calculator and that equals 6.5 let's just write that down there we go so essentially all I need to do is multiply all of these by 6.5 and that would get me to the appropriate amount. Now it only wants the theme park, but I could go and multiply them all. And 10 times 6.5 is equal to 65. There we go. So we can find it that way as well. Okay, just figuring out how many times that sample has to fit into the total amount. Sometimes that's not going to be very nice, as you might have spotted the one below. If I do 5 times 6.5, uh, that would only get that would give me 32.5 people and obviously we can't take 32.5 people uh, so you'd have to end up rounding some of these uh, and sort of doing that appropriately and it doesn't always get you the perfect answer for some of them but it does here for the theme park it gives us a nice whole number there okay so two different methods that you can approach uh, one is just looking at you know what fraction of the sample want to go to that place and then finding that fraction of the total or you can figure out how many times does that sample fit into the total amount so that's what we did there how many times did 30 fit into 195 and that meant that we just had to scale them up and multiply them all by 6.5 to get our total there now for the fin fin finishing part here it does obviously stay state any assumptions you made and expect uh, and explain how this may affect your answer i'm not going to write this down but essentially we are assuming that the sample is going to represent the 195 students now obviously and probably in real life that's probably not the case it's very unlikely that exactly one third are going to want to go to the theme park but in terms of how this may affect your answer if we are wrong okay there could be more students that want to go to the theme park and likewise there could be less students that want to go to the theme park okay so we are assuming that the sample represents all the students and if we are wrong there could be uh, more or less students and actually thinking about real life it's more than likely there are going to be more or less okay but it gives us a good estimate in terms of how many students want to go to the theme park right okay so uh, that's how you go about these sampling and bias questions now I've got a question for you to have a go well I've got two questions for you to have a go we can have a look at one of them first and here it is Right, okay, so here's a question for you to have a go at. Um, you could try this uh, non-calculator if you wanted to, okay, or you can try both methods, but this is, uh, you know, a non-calculator question anyway. Uh, not necessarily saying it wouldn't be on a calculator paper, but this one can be done non-calculator, so see if you can give it a go. Uh, pause the video there and we'll give the answer in a sec. 
Right, okay, so it says each person in the fitness club is going to get a free gift, and we've got the gifts in the table there. And it says we're going to take a sample of 50 people. And again, you can check that out by adding this up to 50. There we go. Uh, it says he asks each person to tell him the gift they would like, and the table shows the information about his results. Okay, there are 700 people in the fitness club, and we want to work out how many people um, we need to order a sports bag for. So our sports bag is here, and we've got 17. Okay, so uh, not the nicest there. Uh, Seventeen isn't isn't the, isn't the nicest of numbers to have to deal with. But essentially, look, if we have a look, we've got seven hundred people in the club, and we've got fifty people in the sample. So if we figure out how do we get from fifty to seven hundred, and then we can scale them up, and we can do that without a calculator. So essentially, we're going to be doing seven hundred divided by fifty, which doesn't look very nice if you write it in a bus stop. Okay, but you can cancel off those zeros there, so we can just do 70 divided by 5. There we are, 70 divided by 5, we wouldn't want to use a bus stop for that, but uh, that is 14. Okay, so that's our answer there is 14. Okay, obviously you can, you can do a bus stop if you want. 5s into 7 go once, remainder 2, and then 5s into 20 go 4 times, so our answer is 14. Right, so essentially all we need to do is multiply all these numbers by 14, and that would tell us our total there so if we do 17 times 14 as we only need that one and we only have to work that one out you can do 17 times 14 not using a calculator as well but we get the answer and I'll write the working out down here 17 times 14 is 238 there we go and that's how many sports bags we're going to need to order there just thinking about the method I looked at before as well uh, you could write it as a fraction we could do 17 out of the 50 and we are not the nicest fraction to have to work out, but essentially that's what we've done there. We've divided by 50 and then times it by 17 to get 17 fiftieths. To be fair, you could actually write this as a fraction over 100. You could write 34 over 100. And there we go, it's 34%. And you could go, go about actually working out 34% as well. Just thinking about all different approaches that you could take here. Um, but there we go, there's a couple of methods to be thinking about. Now obviously, it does say stay any, state any assumption that you've made and explain how it'll affect your answer. So again, the exact same assumption and the exact same effect here. We assume that the sample represents uh, that all the people in the fitness club. And if we are uh, you know, incorrect, uh, we could need to buy more or less sports bags. Okay, so there's that question. I've got one more for you to have a go at before we finish, so here that is. Right, okay, so here's your last question. Um, pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so there are 1,200 students at a school. Kate's gonna help organizing a party and she's gonna order pizza. Uh, she takes a sample of 60 students at the school uh, and asks them to tell her one type of pizza, and this table shows the information. We're gonna work out how much ham pizza uh, she has to buy, so there we go, that's the first one up there. So in terms of working this out then, this is quite a nice one, non-calculator again, because we've got 20 students in the sample, and that is 20 out of 60. And again, that simplifies, if we divide the top and bottom by 20, we get a third. So essentially it's just one third of the students. So we could do 1,200, divide that by three, and again we can do that using a bus stop. There we go, three into 1,200. Threes into 12 go four times, so zero, zero. So our answer there is 400 students. All right, there we go. And again, we could take a different approach to this. You don't have to take that approach there. We could take the approach that I've just taken a second ago. How do we get from 60 to 1,200? And then we just multiply all our numbers by that. So to get from 60 uh, to 1,200, let's have a look. We could do uh, 60 into 1,200, to see how much bigger we need to make them all. Again, cancel off a zero, so six into 120. Six goes into 12 twice with the zero. So we just have to multiply all of these by 20. And there we go, we would times that by 20 there. And 20 times 20, there you go, does give us our 400. Okay, so like obviously two different approaches there that you can take, just thinking about obviously that amount of proportion from the sample and how we get that sample to build back up to the full amount of students. Again, just finishing this off, it does say state any assumption you've made, explain how it may affect your answer. Well, again, just like before, we assume that the sample represents all the students, okay, from the school, the 1,200 students. And again, if we are wrong, we could need to buy more, we could need to buy less, okay, just depending on the actual results there. But there we go, that's how you approach these sampling and bias questions. That is the end of the video. Quite a short one. Hopefully you were you know, happy with that. If it was useful and helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.